This is Barry Vaudrin, and we're here talking with Rich Cristiano and Mr. Gavin McLeod. And they recently came up with a movie or produced a movie called Secrets of Jonathan Speary. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Well, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Barry. Good to be here, Barry. Now, Gavin, what was it about the script that turned you on to doing this project? Everything. Everything. Uh, he neglected to say when he took me to dinner when we were doing the Time Changer at another location, he told me about this film. I said, it's about a 75-year-old man. He said, yeah. I said, well, what part do you want me to play? He says, well, you've got to play the 75. I said, Rich, I'm too young for that. Well, by the time he got around to doing it, I think I was too old for it. No, it was just perfect. Everything about this, this the thing I love about the beauty of this movie is that it's the simplicity there is not one dishonest moment in this film, and yet it makes people laugh, it makes people weep, it's made people come and dedicate their lives to our Lord. It's the greatest fulfillment I've ever had as an actor. Man, you know, I've been making movies since 1957 with Cary Grant and Gregory Peck and Orson Welles and Bing Crosby. Just look it up. It's been over and over and over. Nothing has ever been as significant for me, as important to me, as being fulfilled to me, as the secrets of Jonathan Sperry. Uh, Gavin, will you tell us a little bit about how you found the Lord? Well, I always thought I knew him, but I really didn't. You know, I was never committed because we didn't know what that even meant when I grew up. And uh, But uh, when my wife and I had a divorce, we had a three-year divorce during the love period there. And during that particular time, it's a very long story. Our book is called Back on Course. It's a very long story. But in that time, uh, Jerry Lewis's uh, first wife, Patty, brought my Patty to a prayer group. And they started praying for her. They said, what do you want? I want my husband back. That's me. And so something happened in my life about my mother. They needed to operate on her brain. And the doctor couldn't promise anything. So that morning of the operation, I woke up in my bed in Beverly Hills, because I came from a very poor background, and I always felt the bigger the house, the happier you'd be. You know, that doesn't mean anything anymore, ever did. Uh, I just prayed to Jesus. I said, if you give my mother more time, I'll turn my life over to you. I don't care if I act anymore, which would always been the passion of my life since I was four. And I, my, I look back now and how my life has been structured, how he's allowed me to do the things that even I have never thought I would be able to accomplish. And right after I prayed, uh, something told me to call my wife. I never thought I'd see her again. And so I called my secretary. I didn't even have the phone number. She said, you sure you want to call a boss? I said, oh, yes, I have to. Something's telling me to call her. So I called her. It was 7.50, and I had a late call for work that morning. And I said, hi. I said, this is Gavin. She said, I was just thinking about you. Hmm. And... Uh, I said, can I see you? I don't even know why I'm saying it. She said, well, not right away, because I belong to a, gr a group called Ladies. I said, what does that stand for? It stands for life after divorce can eventually be sane. Well, she belonged to a group with Michael Landon and uh, Gene Hackman. All their wives then, uh, had been dumped. She said, uh, we're all wives who have been dumped by guys like you. And... I said, well, when you come back from your trip, you're going on a trip to San Francisco. It's a support group. I said, can I see you? So I went down on Monday night to see her, not knowing I was just being directed. And so she finally opened the door. We lived at the beach, and we hugged. And she said, I'm sorry your dinner's cold. It's been waiting for three years. And then she went, and she says, I have. I said, somebody tells me you're born again. What does that mean? She says, well, I'll go show you. She said, I have something for you. She went in, and she brought out a Bible. I've had this, and she put my name on it. And she said, look, I wear my running ring. And she said, I always have a place set for you. Excuse me. And uh, Didn't that pay? Yeah, and when I come in the house, I always say, hi, honey, I'm home. Mm -hmm. And one day I was... And that was the beginning of us being back together as new people because uh, Christ turned us into new people. And we've been able to give other people strength in their marriages to know he's no respecter of people, of, of persons. He can do it for us. He can do it for you, too. You know, and 
Rich and I have been on the road with Regina, his wife, and in airports, people come up to me and tell me, you tell your wife, Patty, what she did for us. So you see, we all can be used in our own kinds of way. And Jonathan Sperry is being used. He, he can tell you that we've witnessed a, a 90-year-old woman coming to Jesus because of this movie. 11-year-old boys, 6-year-old boys. It goes on and on and on. Jonathan Sperry Bible study groups are, are springing up all over the country. It's because he and his brother listened to God. He told them what to do. And I will be internally uh, in debt as he used me for this role. I, I said, I said, I just saw it yesterday again for the, maybe the eighth time. It's just an anointed motion picture. And uh, I said, I don't know, Rich, am I becoming a wuss? I said, I, I, just, I just start weeping as soon as the music starts. It's just a beautiful film, and I'm so proud to be able to serve the Lord. It's the ultimate for me. Being an actor since I was four, my passion was always that. But to be used this way mm -hmm. for my Lord and Savior, it just doesn't get any better. Well, there aren't very many movies that have that kind of a Christian message to it, a, a salvation message. Exactly. And you know what really touched me in this movie is when you felt the Holy Spirit speak to you to pray for Nick. Oh, whenever that next story starts, I'm gone. You don't want to sit next to me. I've had people move away from me. It just continues to move. It's a double prayer scene. And how that little boy and how why he plays it. I mean, the, it, the movie is just, there is not a, a, a lie in this movie in performance or in verbiage. And when he says to God, he says, I just want to be normal. Think how many kids out there watching this have thought the same thing. And then it's also about forgiveness, too. And that's one of the greatest tools God ever gave us mm -hmm. so we can have new beginnings. And uh, that forgiveness is an incredible message when you find out. I don't want to spoil anything in case anybody's going to see it. <laughs> well, it was a tremendous movie. Rich, thank you so much for writing it and producing it and filming it. And, and, and Gavin, you did a fantastic job as Jonathan Sperry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thanks a lot, Barry. Appreciate it.